Growing up on a small farm in the Northland, Keith Nelson learned the meaning of hard work from a very young age. When his formal education started, he found there were two different worlds, one more isolated at home and in the farm fields with his older siblings, and the other at school with students with a more diverse and broader background of interest. He had many friends and enjoyed being a part of student council and participating in sports during high school. After graduation, Keith attended U.S. trade school and studied to be a diesel mechanic while working for Harry Darby Corporation as a welder. Later, he was hired by TWA as a fleet service helper. Six months later, he was promoted to mechanic, after which he was drafted into the U.S. Army in October of 1965. He served in the 1st Infantry Division, 1st Military Police Company in Vietnam, and was awarded a Bronze Star for meritorious achievement in ground operations against hostile forces. Keith left the military in October of 1967 and returned to TWA. He earned his government FAA aircraft and power plant mechanics license and an FAA private pilot's license. Throughout his 37-year career at TWA, Keith became an inspection crew chief and union official who represented mechanics and related professions at the airline. He was elected vice president and then president of the Machinist Union during the tumultuous times the ownership and direction of TWA were changing. Keith retired from TWA in 2001, just one month before American Airlines took over the company. Keith's contributions to his country, organized labor, community, and civic groups is profound but his biggest recognition is community activism. As president of the North Bennington Neighborhood Association, he led the effort in getting North Bennington Avenue improved to include widening curbs and sidewalks. He was instrumental in getting Hidden Valley Park developed, which included walking trails, a disc golf course, shelter house, and playground equipment. He was successful in pushing for sidewalks along Parvin Road from North Brighton East to I-435. In 2011, Keith became convinced that the Kansas City Northland needed its own major fountain as part of the City of Fountains. If you think about it, there are 48 major fountains in the city, but only two north of the river. Keith's dream was to make a park that would include a fountain and monument honoring Francois Choteau and the Native Americans who made his trading post successful. In 1821, the trading post sat between where Harris Casino and Cerner are now. The park would also educate the public about our rich local history. Since then, he has worked tirelessly to bring this vision to pass, gaining political and financial support from community leaders, having architectural and engineering plans drawn up, commissioning a world-famous sculpture to create the statues that will adorn the park, and working with Native American tribes to ensure authenticity. And now it is truly happening. The sculpture of Shoto is already on display in City Hall, and the other sculptures are in various stages of completion. There was a groundbreaking ceremony for the park site in November, and the Osage Native American Nation sent two representatives to be a part of it. The Francois Shoto and Native American Heritage Fountain will be along the west side of Shoto Parkway, between I-35 and 210 Highway, just north of Parvin Road. Keith conceived the idea and is making the $1.6 million project happen entirely as an unpaid volunteer. The plan is for it to be completed in time for Missouri's bicentennial in 2021. As an advocate for local history, Keith was instrumental in getting three historical markers installed in Platte County along the new walking trail paralleling M152 Highway. In 2013, Keith was awarded the Neighborhood Leaders Legacy Award by the City of Kansas City Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department for making a difference in the community. This year, he was recognized with the Larry McManus Good Neighbor Award from Northland Neighborhood Incorporated, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to neighborhood improvement and revitalization in Clay and Platte counties. Keith and his wife Dana have been married for 51 years. They raised two boys who now each have children of their own. Throughout the years, Keith stayed busy, coaching each of his boys in baseball and basketball. In his spare time, Keith also founded the Midwest Region of Vintage Chevrolet Club in Kansas City, and after retirement, he started his own business of buying and selling antique cars and car parts. At his home, he has eight garages. My school years was, was very dear to me. Uh, even though I wasn't the best student that uh, ever left Park Hill, I kept a lot from being the worst student. <laughs> but my, uh, I love going to school and being with such a diverse group of kids. At school, there were huge economic uh, and cultural divides when I went to school. And as uh, the film indicated there, I was, uh, 
I was more of a sheltered young man, isolated from uh, uh, other folks. But uh, once I went to school, the whole world opened up to me.